In this tutorial, I will show you how to create a Google Drive application, authorize it to access your account, and query your Google Drive via the Drive API. To get started, let's configure a new project in the Google Cloud Console. This tutorial assumes you already have a Google Cloud Platform account. If you don't have one, I'd recommend setting one up now. You can get to the Google Cloud Console by going to console.cloud.google.com. From there, navigate to the project dropdown and create a new project. Call it whatever you want. I'll call mine Drive API Tutorial. In order to use the Drive API from this project, we first need to enable it. From the project home screen, navigate to the APIs and Services section and choose the Library menu item. Search for Google Drive. There we go. Now I'm in the right project, Google Drive API, and we'll click Enable. Now we need to configure an OAuth consent flow screen to allow users to authorize our application to query their Google Drive. To do this, navigate to the APIs and Services screen and choose the OAuth Consent Screen menu item. To do this, I'll go home to the dashboard, select APIs and Services, and then choose OAuth Consent Screen. If you're using a regular free Gmail account, you will only be able to create an external app. If you're part of a business organization, you can create an internal app. Internal apps are easier to work with because they're only accessible to users within your organization and do not require the same verification process as external apps. For this tutorial though, I'm going to use a regular free Gmail account, so we will make an external app. I'm going to call my app Drive API Tutorial App. In the app creation dialog, add two scopes to your application. The first will be Drive Metadata Read Only here. And the second will be auth drive. The former gives read access to metadata, while the latter gives our app more or less free read and write access within our account. To read more about scopes and Google's recommendations for how to use them, see the docs linked in the video notes. Save your new OAuth consent screen configuration. Just a heads up, we will not go through the application verification process in this tutorial. Now let's generate a set of credentials for our application. For this project, we will imagine that we are creating some kind of CLI tool to interact with our Google Drive. For that purpose, we'll navigate to credentials in the menu Select Create Credentials, choose OAuth Client ID, and then select a desktop application type. We'll just use the provided name. This is a client secret 
which you absolutely should not show to the world. So I will be deleting these credentials as soon as I finish this uh, video tutorial. In the meantime, I'll hit OK, and you should download your credentials. Hit save file. With our project properly configured, it's time to test out some code. I've created a Git repository with some code that we can use to query the Drive API. You can find a link to the repo in the video notes. Clone it and CD into the project directory. I've already cloned the repo, so I'm just going to CD into the directory. Next, install your packages and enter the pipenv virtual environment. I don't have a Docker file for this project because it's meant to be quite simple. Copy your credentials file from your downloads directory into your project directory. For me, this meant running. However, your credentials file most likely has a different name, so work accordingly. Now, as we can see, we have our pip file, our lock file, our quickstart.py, and our credentials.json. Now, run quickstart.py to execute your auth flow for the first time and list 10 drive files. Notice this big scary screen. This is because our app is not verified yet, and it is an external application. If you're working with an internal application, you won't see this screen. For us, we can click Advanced and go to Drive API Tutorial App. Give the app authorization to access your account. When the program completes, you should see 10 files from your drive printed to the screen, just here. Let's walk through what our quickstart.py script actually does. At a high level, the script will 1. Retrieve a locally stored refresh token or execute an OAuth flow to generate one and store it locally. Two, build a Google Drive service object that we can use to query the API. And three, print to the screen 10 files from the Google Drive account, which we authorized access to. Picking these apart, get credentials looks for a file named token.json. If present, the script reads the file, confirms the credentials have not expired, and uses them to build a credential Python object. If no token.json is found, we execute an auth flow so the user can grant permissions defined in the scopes variable to your application. This flow here is what executes when we can't find, uh, when we can't find valid local tokens. Finally, we return the credentials object. Looking at this build function, this builds a service object. Since Google has a lot of APIs to maintain, they publish a REST API and then a discovery document for each API describing its schema and what methods are allowed. Their language-specific client libraries know how to read these discovery documents and support the functions they describe. This is the reason why you won't find any actual methods defined for their client libraries in dynamic languages like Python. They're all handled on the fly. We then pass the service object to our list files method. 
or function, I guess, whatever you want to call it. Um, the list files function takes the service object and uses it to call the files rest endpoint, as we can see here. Files list. In the video notes, I've linked to some documents describing what the files list endpoint does on the Google Drive REST API. Notice that we're required to specify the list of fields we want the API to send back to us. Next page token and the ID and name of each of these files. And that's it. You now have a bit of code that will generate credentials via an OAuth flow store them, and use them to list out files in your Google Drive via the Drive API. Hope this has been helpful. Thanks so much.